Hello, welcome. My name is Claire, and we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in January. It is currently Saturday morning. I live in Toronto, and it is currently minus 16 degrees outside. Please help. <laughs> get into it. So I have some notes on my laptop that I will be reading from. And I'm going to go in chronological order of all the books I read. I'm going to be honest, we started this month off a little bit rough. The first book I read was Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson, which is the fifth book in the Truly Devious series. I really liked the first four books in the series, so I was excited for this, but honestly, I fell really flat for me. So if you don't know what Truly Devious is about, it's a book about a young detective named Stevie who attends a private school in Vermont for the brightest thinkers, inventors, and artists. She goes to solve a cold case from the 1920s when the school first opened, and this book takes place on a trip to London with her friends. The book switches between Stevie's POV and the POV of nine college students who went on a trip, and then two of them were found murdered, axe murdered to be more specific, on a trip in 1995. So this book was definitely my least favorite in the series. The mystery took a backseat to a lot of the like unnecessary drama between like, like Stevie's friend group. And I found the ending really frustrating. I think a lot of people did. It was like a really cliffhangery ending, but not like a fun cliffhanger, like a dumb cliffhanger. And everyone in the book is low-key annoying. I gave this book three stars, so you're probably wondering why, because I just told you everything I don't like about it. I still enjoyed it, like I read it pretty fast but it just it didn't live up to the rest of the series for me. The second book I read was Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I've read a couple of her books and I really liked them so I was excited to read this. I got it on a Kindle deal of the day for like two dollars. I read most of my books on my Kindle. It's back here. Very pretty. And just because books books are expensive and I read some of my books from the library but I usually just get the ebooks on my iPad or my computer. This book, Daily Darker, is about a family. Okay, you know this trope. I, I, I promise you know this trope. The family that hates each other and they're vacationing on an island that gets cut off from the world and someone dies. You know, like there's, there's a concerning number of books that fit this trope. Daisy's whole family gets together for her Nana's 80th birthday and her Nana was told by like a psychic that she was gonna die when she turned 80. So they're, they're there expecting her death basically. People want, people want Nana's money, people want Nana's will. 
That's why the whole family shows up. Also, the whole family Loki hates Daisy for reasons unknown to us for a good portion of the book. And then at midnight, Nana is found dead, surprise, surprise, and each hour someone else dies. So everyone has secrets, obviously. I read this book really fast. I found it pretty engrossing. And until the end, I definitely would have given this a higher rating, but I found the end really anticlimactic and like it felt like a bit of a cop-out for me. I don't want to spoil it. The ending was was questionable and I was kind of disappointed by it. Sorry, I'm gonna have to text my mom back. One second. She's buying me snacks for work. Fun fact, I work full-time as a graphic designer. So I'll probably make videos, some videos about that too if anybody's interested in it. Okay. <clears throat> third book that I read this month was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I listened to this in the audiobook and I would highly recommend listening to the audiobook if you haven't read it yet. I know I'm kind of late to the party, but it's so good. This was easily a five-star read for me. I listened to it in like a day and a half. Jeanette McCurdy is such an incredible storyteller and the narration like makes it so much more impactful because she's the one reading it and telling her life story. So basically, if you don't know, if you've been living under a rock, this is a memoir by a Nickelodeon star on her toxic relationship with her mom and her struggles as a childhood star. If you have not read this yet, I highly recommend looking up trigger warnings. There's a lot of struggles with alcohol abuse and eating disorders. And Jeanette McCurdy basically tells us the story of her life and how her mom was very controlling, how she didn't want to be an actress, and how she ended up where she is now. It's very interesting to me because it's almost told from like a child's perspective for a good portion of the book because she's writing the way she was thinking when she was like 10 years old. So it idolizes her mom a lot. It's very interesting to read or hear for me. <laughs> so I highly recommend if you have not read it yet. It was my, the first memoir I've ever read listen to whatever well it's also the first audiobook I've ever listened to and it was so good I highly recommend the next series I have clearly been living under a rock because I read six of crows and crooked kingdom this month I don't know what took me so long because I read shadow and bone like two years ago and it was great I loved it the show was great I loved it I just was putting off six of crows for some reason and it's so good. So it's set in the same universe as Shadow and Bone in the Grishaverse where there's like all different groups of people that have these magical powers. It's a fantasy type, high fantasy book, basically about a crew of outcasts that pull off a major heist. The character development in this book is incredible. Like it's so captivating to read. I wish I could erase it from my memory and read it again because it's so good. Something I've never really read before and it takes place directly after the Shadow and Bone series so I might have to reread that one too but I loved all the characters. The writing was so good. It was really fast paced. I read it super fast. Both Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I think I read them in like like four days or something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so if you have not read it, I highly recommend. It's a really really good fantasy series that's not like super romance based either it's just kind of a lot of complex relationships and emotions with a really really cool badass high story to back it up Good afternoon. We were at the mall for the very riveting purpose of changing my phone plan. We got Starbucks. Now I have a, what is this? Green tea ice peach thing. You have a uh, ice matcha latte with oat milk. Iconic. And, yeah, and vanilla. And we're going to go to the library and look at some books and read our Kindles and hang out for a bit. that I read was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Again, I am so behind on, on this, this hype train. Uh, but basically, this story, this is the story of Achilles told through the eyes of Patroclus. One second. Patroclus. Patroclus. Okay, back to regular scheduling programming. 
This is the story of Achilles told through the eyes of Patroclus. And Patroclus meets Achilles at age nine after being exiled from his kingdom. It's written as a love story and it really humanizes Achilles. It follows their training with Chiron and then the seas of seas siege of Troy, which is like a 10 year event. It's a story of sacrifice. It was definitely a lot more character focused than I expected, which is really well written. It's a very beautiful story. There isn't a whole lot of like action scenes necessarily. Like it focuses primarily on the relationship between Achilles and Pat Oh my God, I already forgot how to say it. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend Incredible Characterization. I gave this book four stars just because I really, really enjoyed it and I read it really fast, but I did find it a little bit slow at certain parts, but I think it's really well written and it definitely made me a lot more interested in the story of Achilles, which I had never really read about before. The next book I read was Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. This book was so much fun to read. I loved it. I think this is a book that's probably going to be a bit polarizing. It's written very meta. So the main character, Ernest, talks directly to the reader throughout the entire book, like promising to be a reliable narrator and telling us how this book like fits in and doesn't fit into literary tropes. I thought it was really, really interesting and really fun to read. The plot is basically, once again, a family that hates each other comes together, but they're on a mountain this time, not an island, and they get cut off from the world and somebody dies. You know, you, we know, we know this. And Ernie's brother, is seeing the family for the first time after three years of being in prison for murder, which Ernie helped testify to put him there. So there's some drama for you. I thought it was really funny and suspenseful. We learned a lot about each of the unique characters through Ernie's conversational writing style. Again, I think people are either gonna love or hate this book. I'm gonna put up <laughs> a photo I took of one of the chapters. This is the entire chapter, just this, this one line which is really funny to me. Again, my, everyone might not like it, but it is like a murder mystery, it's suspenseful. So I highly recommend trying to read it. And the last book I read, which I'm gonna put in some trigger warnings right now because this book is about some very serious topics. But I read, or I listened to actually, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which is written by the victim of the Brock Turner sexual assault case. So again, major trigger warnings for this book for discussions of rape and sexual violence. This book is incredible though. I, I honestly think everyone should read it. Chanel is such a beautiful writer. It's a heart-wrenching and inspiring story about trauma, isolation, and shame. And for the longest time, obviously Chanel Miller was anonymous. So she was only known as Emily Doe. So this book is really her taking back her name and telling her story and this book shines a light on the failure of the criminal justice system to protect victims. It's a huge plot point of the story where Chanel is talking about her experience after, in the aftermath of dealing with this trial that went on for like four years and the impact it had on herself and her family. I give this five stars. It's incredible. It's life-changing. It was frustrating and devastating and inspiring to listen to, especially as a woman. That is the last book that I read in January. I had an actually really good reading month, which I didn't think I was going to because the first two books were kind of rough, but every book after that was mostly five stars. Highly recommend all the books that I talked about in this video, most of them anyway. I will put them in the description also, and I'll also link my Goodreads down there if you wanna follow me. I would like to do one of these every month. I'm trying to read. My goal for this year is 70 books, which last year I read 72. So I'm hoping I can go above that, but I didn't want to like, I don't want to make a crazy, crazy goal, especially since I'm working full time and I don't know how much time I'm going to have to read. But this month was a really, really good start. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far into the video, I will see you again at some point. Bye. <laughs>